One of the top things I get asked by newcomers to 3D printing is, where do I find those cool models that you print online? Where do I look? So in this 2019 updated video, I'm going to go through my top 10 websites where you can find all sorts of amazing models for free to download and print. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. We're going to kick things off with Thingiverse. It's going to be no surprise to anybody. Thingiverse was originally created by MakerBot years and years and years ago and it was the first real 3D printing file repository. Originally it wasn't even for 3D printing. You could get laser cutting files and anything you could use to download and then make stuff. But it quickly became known as the go-to place for STL models for 3D printing. Now these days it's owned by Stratasys which bought MakerBot and look it's the biggest by far place to get STL files but its searchability is poor. It's almost impossible to find exactly what you want just because of the sheer volume of models and the fact that the navigation wasn't really ever improved. It's kind of sat and just gained all these models over the years and hasn't really become easier to use. So a lot of models on there, but searchability is pretty poor and the quality of the models unfortunately is pretty low as well because there's no real quality control. You can upload almost anything to it and just it goes up ready to download and it's hard to tell if the model is suitable for 3D printing or if it, if it works, if it's been designed well. Having said all that, there is still incredible models hosted onto Thingiverse and this is a great collection by Reckless Robbie and it's Settlers of Catan tiles, but they've been modified. So these are Warcraft inspired Settlers of Catan files and you can download and 3D print them and modify your game. So that's really, really cool. A great use for 3D printing. And with Thingiverse, everything is free, but you can choose to tip a designer if you really like their work and it will eventually find its way to them if they've enabled that feature. So overall, it's free, but you can tip if you want to. Number two is My Mini Factory. My Mini Factory's whole thing is guaranteed printable. And I don't know if they still say that, but the idea is that these models have been tested. So you're going to get a much better user experience when you download models from here versus the kind of Russian roulette of Thingiverse. But there's a less, uh, less wide selection. Having said that though, My Mini Factory has exploded since I featured it last and there is so many models on here. My personal favorite are the models from the Scan the World initiative, where people go to museums around the world and sites and 3D scan things like statues and artifacts, and then make them available for free to download and print. So for example, you would have seen this on the channel. This is the Gayer Anderson cat, which is an Egyptian cat, and it's, it's a fantastic artifact and a very fantastic 3D print. The, the scan is very high quality, and I love to print this to test out my 3D printers. Now, the thing about Mining Factory is they've recently expanded off to paid files. So you can also buy models on Mining Factory, or if you're a 3D designer, you can choose to upload and pay a certain fee to sell your 3D printed model models on My Mini Factory. So that's also an interesting option if you want to go down that route. But overall, My Mini Factory, you're going to find a lot of really good models in heaps of different categories. It's very easy to search, very easy to find interesting categories and things to print, and the model quality in general is very good. Number three is You Imagine. This is like Thingiverse, except it's owned by Ultimaker, not MakerBot. It's essentially the same thing. It's not as big as Thingiverse, and the model quality is generally a bit higher. Now, I don't use You Imagine personally very often, but there are a few designers that use it almost exclusively because it's got such a good sort of open source following. The Creative Commons licenses and stuff are very well respected here, and you can get lots of really neat models on it. So, as a great example would be the OpenRC stuff done by Daniel Noray. Uh, if you don't know Daniel Noray, why? Go follow his work. This is the OpenRC F1 Dual Color McLaren Edition. Uh, there, this is a fully 3D printable remote control car and it's amazing. Daniel has done incredible work and he's uploaded this free to print, modify and create. So you imagine does have some really, really cool models on there. It's just not as big, I'd say, as what my mini factory has become and uh, definitely not as big as Thingiverse. In terms of cost, I don't think anything on You Imagine has any price. I think it's all free because as I said, the whole idea is open source designs. 
So yeah, you're not gonna really pay for anything on your Imagine. But again, if you do like someone's work, you should seek out a way to tip them and show your support. Up next is Colts 3 d a French founded 3D file repository where you can find incredibly high quality models that are free and or paid. So you can also sell your models on this website or you can buy them for buying very high quality files or you can also find very good 3D printable files that are free. Uh, thing, about, thing I like about Colts 3D is there's a very high aesthetic level. So a lot of the models on here are very well designed in terms of their aesthetics. They really look very good if you're gonna be printing demo models. Um, and a lot of designers find their home here because you can be financially supported on here and you'll find a good mix of free and paid models from them generally. In terms of searching, it's very easy. There's a lot of very good categories here like art, fashion, jewelry, home, and you'll also get various promotions and they do contests as well. My Mini Factory as well do contests, which is a great way of bringing lots of new models in and new uh, users. But in terms of featuring an artist uh, designer on here, you can't go past Yuri of 3D Workbench. Um, prolific designer, does a lot of amazing cosplay stuff, so cosplay weapons, uh, you got a Pokeball there. Um, he does charge for a lot of these models, but a lot of them are free as well. So for example, he did the McDonald's. I remember when he was modeling this, Freaking ridiculous like mech hamburger um, and then like this is a transformer model that is free So you can't go past Yuri's work and he hosts it up here on uh, Colts 3D Next up we have the models uploaded by the Smithsonian now I did feature this in my previous video quite a while ago And I'm happy to say that this is still active um, unfortunately like the, the NASA STL repository did slow down significantly after 2015 with like only one model a year sometimes but Smithsonian still has heaps of things that you can view and in lots of cases download and 3D print and what's really cool about this idea this particularly excites me is that they can 3D scan an incredibly fragile artifact because obviously the Smithsonian has a lot of artifacts in their possession and then you can 3D print them and share it with people in a way that they can touch and they can explore. So in terms of the tactility, if that's a word, the tactile nature of things, you can't touch a thousand year old artifact, but you could 3D scan and touch the actual 3D printed version of it. I went to an exhibition where they had 3D scanned little ornaments found in um, mummification burial sites where they, they actually like got a CAT scan. They didn't even, they don't open them up because it destroys them. And then they recreated the actual little ornaments with 3D printing so you could touch them. And that's fantastic. So as a great example of what the Smithsonian has done, this is a fantastic little cat ornament. The quality of the 3D scans are incredible in most cases, uh, depending on the object they're scanning. This is a little wooden cat, absolutely spectacular. And as I said, not everything can be downloaded and printed, but just to show you a good example, you go into models here, and then you go into list view and if it says downloadable then it highly likely will have an STL file to print and the thing, cool thing about the Smithsonian models is if it's got an STL file for 3D printing it's been made watertight so it's been wrapped and prepared to be 3D printable without any issues and so for example this one this basket 3D scan basket that's one they got some good scanners there you go so you got a render version which is a higher quality um, higher uh, triangle count and then you got a 3d print version so 11 megabytes there in terms of cost there is no cost to these models you can download and 3d print them but their terms are very specific they are for non-commercial use they are for personal use and they're for education so don't print these and try to sell them or anything that's against their terms of service you can only really use these models if they're just for personal not-for-profit use um, and for educational use next is one that I pretty much guarantee you've never heard of, and that is the NIH 3D Print Exchange, the National Institute of Health in the US. And this is like an exchange of models for health professionals and teaching. So this is fantastic for scientific models and things that not many people would really understand or know about, but for teaching a difficult, complicated subject, I can see this being incredibly valuable. And I can see why something like this is so useful because you can connect with different educators around the country and around the world and share a model to 3D print for your, for your edu education. So one that I found really interesting was this fluid field vestibular apparatus for vertigo education. 
<laughs> and it's a DIY project, and they actually made a video about it um, and where to get the the actual parts for it. And it, it's it educates how positional vertigo works. Like, I don't know how it works, but I'm sure if I went through the DIY process of printing this model and then putting it together, I'd figure it out and learn. So that's just really neat. So niche. But in terms of education, it's invaluable. So definitely check it out. The models are free to download, but they do have licensing in the Creative Commons, which is Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, although it might vary between different models. But for example, with the one I just showed, uh, it actually goes in to say, you know, to clarify the type of Creative Commons license that you can remix, tweak and build upon, but it's non-commercial and you have to let other people know that your new works are based on the original by attribution. So pretty straightforward. I will say there is a bit of a, um, a management issue with the website because it looks like people are going on and uploading trash and then using it to try to market things. So like, for example, this castle here, that's nothing to do with education. Um, you know, another one there, another one there. And you can see here a regiment of degenerative lumbar spine something something like that's not that's not use, useful for this website. Um, but this other stuff like that's the uh, <laughs> that's the Vertigo uh, teaching model, syringe cutting tool adapter, all sorts of really niche things for medical industry for teaching uh, in the medical field. Pretty neat. Now the next two aren't really for 3D printing, they're for designers and 3D printing might be part of that, that workflow, but they're not specifically for 3D printing and we're starting with GrabCAD. If you don't know GrabCAD and you're an engineer or product designer, what are you doing? Go sign up for GrabCAD. It's free to register and people upload the craziest assemblies and models to GrabCAD. Like for example, this is the home page and someone's 3D modeled the Anycubic Photon. <laughs> so Mike... Congrats, you're nuts. Um, <laughs> the Anycubic Photon, if you don't know, is a 3D printer that uses resin. Uh, I reviewed it as well recently. It's one of my most watched reviews for some reason. And he's gone and 3D modeled it. So you can actually get his model and download it. He's assembled it uh, together as a step file, which is a going to be the assembly. And Fusion 360 will open that, for example. He's got some renders. So what I use GrabCAD a lot for is if I'm doing a design with very standardized mechanical components. And a good example of that would be a NEMA 17. So a NEMA 17 is a step motor that's in almost every 3D printer out there. And why would you 3D model one from scratch when it's such a standard component? There's heaps on GrabCAD for a start, but you can grab one. So this is from Murad Forda Rahman. I'm sorry, I'm bad with names. Uh, and he's uploaded this uh, in step format. I do need to stress that a lot of these models can be in like SolidWorks format or uh, Autodesk Inventor. I do think Fusion 360 will open SolidWorks files and Inventor files, but I don't believe you get to keep the feature tree. So keep it in mind, um, but step is universal and that'll be opened up in most CAD programs. And then you can use that, bring it into your assembly and build your model around it. So it's really good for speeding up the design process, but don't expect these models to 3D print. They're really designed to be um, like a representation of the real thing. There's not really designed to be um, just like 3D printable, like the wires there, for example. The intention of these models aren't for that. It's so you can design really cool things quicker using standardized components. Next, we have an absolute goldmine for engineers and product designers, just like GrabCAD, except even more specific, we have trace parts. So picture this, you're a company that provides timing pulleys and gears and all sorts of things. Well, you want engineering firms to use your components, so how do you encourage them to do that? You release 3D models of those components that these companies can use in their assemblies, and then when they're happy, they can just they can order them from you. Well, Trace Parts puts everyone into one spot. You used to, you used to have to go to everyone's website like McMaster Car and SDPSI and all that, but now Trace Parts just has everything. <laughs> so a great example would be this. So this is just a spur gear. Uh, in terms of the navigation in trace parts, it's incredibly intuitive. It knows exactly what things are. So, this, so for example, to get to this point, it's a uh, classification, mechanical component, power transmission, gears, helical. So you can go back one and then you can find, okay, well, what's under the gear um, category? You can go down to gear, rack, spur, helical. It's the best in this whole list. And the really neat thing about this is you can go in and see a proper 3D uh, preview before you download it. And then you can choose from so many different formats. 
Um, and it depends what your CAD software is. You know, you got a Libra, you got um, 3D printable uh, models like 3MF, AMF, uh, Katia, Creo, <laughs> IGES, which is Universal, uh, OBJ, all sorts. So whatever program you use, you'll find a format that works for you here. We can even go straight to STL. You do need to register for trace parts, just as like you need to register for GrabCAD, but it's free. And the really neat thing is you can 3D print these models. So for example, you're designing something just for yourself. Maybe you can just download and print a gear instead of buying a gear. But also if you need lots of them or you need a real metal one, you can go straight into the quotation stage and buy them. So really neat, definitely underused. I don't see many people using this sort of stuff. Um, except in industry, so definitely add trace parts to your um, bookmarks if you design anything mechanical because it's really, really handy. <laughs> Up next, we have STL Hive. Um, I'm not sure how I came across this one, but it's got some really, really nice models. So what I, what I think STL Hive is, correct me if I'm wrong, whoever owns this website, is it's their own in-house models and they have a lot of that are for sale and a lot that are for free as well. And it's like toys for adults and kids. So you've got lots of uh, remote control, like uh, quadcopter parts, for example, like, you know, amazing stuff. You've got this self-balancing robot design. You've got a prop balancer. You've got these uh, Lego, like, tires. And a lot of them are free. So a lot of them are paid, but uh, they definitely look like high quality models. I will say, though, uh, the navigation's pretty good, but the process of checking out needs to be improved because it needs you to fill in all this information like address and that but we're buying digital assets so why do we need to fill in an address it's a bit too clunky and i really did hesitate to bother doing it so uh the team at stl hive need to make that a bit more streamlined but um definitely worth checking out if you're looking for something cool to 3d print maybe with your kids or something buy the electrical components um, and put them together or like in this circumstance it's using lego components so 3D printing to add to Lego and make things, that's really cool. And number 10, we have the DM Workshop. So Miguel has done kind of the impossible. He has produced tons, and I mean tons, of free Dungeons and Dragons minis. Of all the kind of monsters you'll need to play D&D. He's produced them. They're on Shapeways, but you can just download them and print them at home if you like. Um, and that is a crazy achievement. So, as an example here, uh, I like the Lich, for example. You can get it printed at Shapeways using this, the smooth fine detail is a very high quality 3D printing process for 16 bucks US, that's very little for a high quality mini. Or if you sign in to Shapeways, which it's free, um, you can then just download the product here. Massive hats off to Miguel for making all of these models available, uh, which is just Incredible because if you have a 3d printer even the resin one these days, they're quite accessible um, Like the any cubic photon I just mentioned before you can print these out for just cents versus paying heaps and Then paint them and finish them and they'll look more than good enough for your games I will say that the lich that I did download does have, have a few errors in it. There's a few intersecting um, bodies and there's a few gaps in the mesh. It's not quite properly watertight most 3d printing slices won't care um, but what I recommend is chucking the file through 3D Builder. Of course, I recommend doing that with everything from Thingiverse because Thingiverse is invariably very, usually very bad. But 3D Builder will tell you if a file needs repairing and it will do it very easily, quickly for you using the NetFab engine. And that's the only thing I'll say about these models is they needed a little bit of repair, but that's... I mean, who cares? They're free. Chuck some love to Miguel. And also a big thanks to um, 3D Printed Tabletop for this video, which pointed me to his direction. I'll link to this video as well in the video description. So you can check out a good like preview of what they look like when you print them on FDM and all of that. Uh, but it's uh, an incredible achievement and definitely worthy of this list. Aha, but I bet you didn't think I'd include my own files in this list. Well, you probably saw this coming. But look, I do charge for some of my models, but a lot of them are free as well. And I charge because this is my full-time job, but at the same time, I understand that 3D printing is an incredible community and I do keep a lot of my models free for you to test out at home. So one of my most popular free models by far is the Easter egg torture test. So I did this last year, 2018 Easter, 
and it is a file with three different parts that are separate, they print at the same time, and the idea is that they can rotate around each other. It's a really challenging, gorgeous model that you can try to 3D print at home, and that's free, and there's a link in the description to where you can get all of my models, free and paid. But look, that's just my little plug at the end. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you found this video useful and you discovered a few great new sources for 3D printable models or normal files for designing stuff, like, you know, from GrabCAD or Trace Parts. I, they're definitely underutilized. Oh, and if you're interested to see how I process these models, you can check out the first episode of the 3D Printing Gauntlet where I looked through Thingiverse and downloaded five random Thingiverse models and showed how I sliced them in Prusa Slicer 2.0. That video is going to be here, and that will hopefully help you do the next stage of the 3D printing journey, which is slicing. See you later, guys. Bye.